Using dissection techniques, we have examined the internal anatomy of a frog, a perch, a sea star, an earthworm, and a crayfish. Now, we will turn our attention to the anatomy of a mammal, the fetal pig. In this lab, we will examine the external anatomy of the pig, and then perform a dissection to explore its digestive and excretory systems. One of the distinguishing features of a mammal is hair. However, at this stage in its development, the fetal pig has only a few hairs. One of the most distinctive features of a pig is its flat snout, located at the anterior end. Two nostrils, used for breathing and smelling, are located in the snout. Below the snout is its mouth. A pig is an omnivore. An omnivore is an animal that eats plants or animals. Along the edge of the pig's tongue are taste buds. Posterior to the snout are the eyes. The fetal pig is not fully developed, so its eyes have not yet opened. Behind the eyes are the ears. This large flap of the pig's outer ear is the pinna. Like most mammals, the pig has four legs. The four legs are about the same length because this mammal was created to walk on all four legs. At its posterior end is a short tail. Some pigs have straight tails. Others have curly tails. Just below the tail is the anus. On the ventral surface is its umbilical cord, which attached the fetal pig to its mother's uterus. Two rows of bumps are also visible on the pig's ventral side. These are the mammary papillae. Both male and female pigs have mammary papillae, but only the female pig develops mammary glands. Mammary glands are another feature distinctive to mammals. Before we begin the dissection of the fetal pig, it is important to secure its legs with rubber bands. Now that the legs are secured, we are ready to make our first incision. We must first locate the sternum, by pressing on the skin in the upper part of the ventral surface. Our first incision is a medial incision along the axis, starting about halfway down the sternum. While cutting the skin covering the thoracic cavity, the sternum will protect the internal organs. However, caution must be taken when cutting the skin posterior to the sternum, because we could cut too deeply and damage internal organs. We need to cut around the umbilical cord on both sides. Using the scalpel, we will make four shallow transverse incisions. We begin at the anterior end of the medial incision and cut diagonally, just posterior to the foreleg. This incision is repeated on the other side. Next, we make a transverse cut just anterior to the hind leg starting at the medial incision. This incision is repeated on the other side. With the blunt scissors, we follow our previous incisions to cut through the muscle layers. As we cut toward the sternum, we pull up on the incised skin to keep it away from the internal organs. Next, we cut up through the sternum and ribs near the anterior end of the medial incision. Since the fetal pig skeleton is mostly cartilaginous, we can cut through it with scissors. We follow the transverse incisions near the forelegs and cut through the muscle layers with the blunt scissors. We also cut through more ribs. After cutting through the ribs, we turn the tray around and begin cutting around the umbilical cord. Now we can pull up on the umbilical cord and see where it continues into the pig's body. The umbilical cord contains two arteries and a vein, which connect to the circulatory system. The two arteries lie on either side of the umbilical cord and are easily seen. The vein is deeper inside the umbilical cord, so it is not visible. After moving the umbilical cord, we cut along the transverse incisions near the hind legs. Before we can fold back the muscles and skin to open up the body cavity, 
we need to cut away some of the diaphragm that is attached to the body wall. To get a clear view of the internal organs, we secure the skin and muscles of the body cavity with pins. Now we can examine the organs of the digestive system. The largest organ in the body cavity is the liver. A pig's liver has five lobes, three of which can be seen here. Beneath the liver is the gallbladder. When we lift up the left lobes of the liver, we see the stomach. A pig has a one-chambered stomach, which performs both mechanical digestion and chemical digestion. Since a fetal pig has never used its stomach, the stomach is rather flat. The stomach connects to the small intestine. In the first curve of the small intestine, we can see the pancreas which is a gland that aids in digestion and other metabolic processes. The small intestine winds around in the abdominal cavity until it connects to the large intestine. The large intestine ends at the rectum. To see the organs of the excretory system, we must remove the liver and all the organs attached to the digestive system. With these organs removed, we can see the two kidneys. To get a better view, we need to pick away the membrane surrounding a kidney. The kidneys filter liquid waste out of the blood. This waste is mixed with water to produce urine. Urine passes from the kidneys into the ureters. After passing through the ureters, the urine flows into the urinary bladder, which is located in this region but it is deflated and difficult to see. In the next lab, we will continue to dissect the fetal pig and study its circulatory, respiratory, and nervous systems. At this time, proceed with the corresponding activities. <laughs>